Hello everyone, and I am Jason. So let's go. Okay, so today, well not exactly today, but about a month ago, the FDA approved two new drugs. And the drugs are going to be Cast Jevy, and the second one is going to be Lift Genia. Uh, I believe I'm saying that right. I, I looked up how to say it, and that's kind of what I found. And then you can see in parentheses, that's like what the... They don't have a generic yet, but in 20 years when their patent expires, that's what the generic will be. Okay, and this was announced December 8th, 2023. Alright, so... Why am I making this video? Why is this significant? So this is the first ever FDA drug utilizing CRISPR-Cas9. Now, you probably have no idea what that is. That's okay. I'm going to talk briefly about it a little bit later in this video. Just for now, understand this is a technology that is used for editing DNA. So someone would already have a disease. You could use this CRISPR-Cas9 to edit their DNA, and that can eradicate it or change what's going on in the condition. We'll talk more soon. And the drug that uses this is Casjevy, the first drug, and that's what we're going to be talking about first. Okay, so now, second thing, why is this significant? This is the first FDA-approved gene editing drugs for sickle cell disease. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about sickle cell also, but in short, sickle cell disease is a disease, it's a group of diseases that affect the red blood cells. So normally red blood cells are a circle, but in sickle cell disease, there is a mutation in a proteins encoding for it, and it causes the circle to become like a moon shape or a crescent or a sickle. They call it a sickle, crescent, moon shape. You know, you get the idea. Um, so prior to these advancements of these two new drugs, there weren't really many options to manage sickle cell disease. The main one that everyone talked about is called hydroxyurea. And there are a lot of, you know, bad things, adverse effects that go along with hydroxyurea. So this is, you know, an, an, another option. All right, so the basics. So if you look at the top right, like I said before, those are red blood cells. And a circular shape is going to be our normal red blood cell shape. The image next to it is what happens when you have sickle cell disease. It's going to be looking more like this crescent moon shape or a sickle. Okay, so sickle cell disease is a group of inherited red blood cell disorders. Healthy red blood cells are around and they move through small blood vessels to carry oxygen to all parts of the body. Red blood cells contain hemoglobin, which is very important, a protein that carries oxygen, and in someone who has SCD, sickle cell disease, the hemoglobin is abnormal. That's the most important thing that's like talking about what sickle cell disease is, which causes the red blood cells to become hard and sticky and look like a C-shaped farm tool called a sickle. Sickle cells, you know, gets the name. Okay, so the sickle cells die early, which causes a constant shortage of red blood cells. Also, when they travel through small blood vessels, they get stuck and clog the blood flow. And this can cause a lot of pain. That's why a lot of sickle cell patients will come into the hospital and will need morphine or keep it going with dilaudid even. And they build up a tolerance over time and addiction is a possibility with this. So this can cause a lot of issues. Um, like I just read it, this can cause pain and other serious complications such as infection, acute chest syndrome, and stroke affect the kidneys, you know, just general affect and psychology, how you're feeling because you keep having to go to the hospital. Um, yeah, so this is the basics part. I'm going to go a little bit more into like more than the basics a little bit later, but first starting the basics. So prior to these two new drugs, what were our manage management options? So the first one I already said is hydroxyurea, but this would be a preventive option. So like if you're having acute pain, like pain right now from a sickle cell, like a sickle red blood cell blocking the blood flow, hydroxyurea is not going to help you during this flare up. It's just to prevent it in the future from happening. In those cases, you would need to worry about reperfusion and pain management. So some other uh, adverse effects for hydroxyurea are very similar to chemo drug adverse effects. So we would have myelosuppression, which is basically um, in the bone marrow, in your bones, that is where you have red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, uh, they start there as stem cells. And by myelosuppression, you're basically lowering 
that production. So you're going to have less white blood cells, less red, bl red blood cells, and this is a problem. If you have less white blood cells, you're much more likely for infection. If you have less red blood cells, you're going to be something called anemic, so you're going to be more weak, and it's also going to be harder for you to be passing oxygen around in the body because that's the main role of red blood cells is moving oxygen around and getting rid of carbon dioxide waste. Um, so now you could also have something called alopecia, which is like hair loss, which again, as you could imagine, similar to chemo. And I wrote teratogenic, which means if you're taking this and you're pregnant, teratogenic means it can harm the baby. The other big option that some people may consider is getting a stem cell transplant. Now, this is a similar mechanism of action that, you know, these two new drugs, Casgevy and Lefgenia, implement and use. But this is saying it would come from a stem cell from like a relative, like a brother, sister, and you know, something like that. With Casgevy and Lefgenia, it actually uses the own patient's stem cells. So much more success because of that. So now, continuing with the basics, how does Casgevy work? So patient stem cells are removed, just as I said. Uh, genetic modification on patient blood stem cells is done to code for normal hemoglobin. So the problem before was we have abnormal hemoglobin protein, and because of that abnormal protein, that was causing the sickle shape. So these stem cells are then transplanted back into the patient where they multiply within the bone marrow and the new coding for hemoglobin within the red blood cells do not cause the sickling. Okay, so going from, you know, sickle shaped on the right, this is my right, so hopefully that's your right too, <laughs> back towards the normal red blood cell most of the time. Okay, and this will prevent pain from sickle cell occlusions and, you know, other of those like exacerbations. So how is this done? Like, how are these stem cells modified? They are modified using CRISPR-Cas9. And I basically talked about it very briefly before, but CRISPR-Cas9, it came out in like 2012, 2013, so it's pretty new. Um, but it can be directed to cut DNA in targeted areas. So in this case, it would be where the mal programming of the hemoglobin would be, enabling the ability to accurately edit, remove, replace, yeah, 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 DNA where it was cut. So we would take out the abnormal or we would alter the abnormal hemoglobin subunit genes and then we would fix it or we would add new or we would modify it. And I don't know the exact specifics, the second, because it's all new still, but it would be on case by case. So now we're going more past just the basics. So more than the basics, how does Casgevy work? So patient stem cells, they are modified by genome editing using CRISPR-Cas9 technology. Okay, we well know that already. So CRISPR-Cas9 can be directed to cut DNA in targeted areas, enabling the ability to accurately edit, remove, add, or replace DNA where it was cut. So that's still the basics. The modified blood stem cells are transplanted planted back into the patient where they multiply within the bone marrow and increase the production of fetal hemoglobin. So HBF is like the shortcut for that. A type of hemoglobin that facilitates oxygen delivery. So fetal hemoglobin, it's very common. Well, it, it's like the main type of hemoglobin for newborn babies. And the reason why they would have that is because fetal hemoglobin has a more attraction, more like desire for oxygen than like an adult. So that would be good. Like if you're a baby inside the womb, you're going to be wanting to have more of a desire for that oxygen by having this fetal hemoglobin than the parent. Because if the parent has more of a desire, the baby's not getting the oxygen and the baby won't develop properly. So by having this fetal hemoglobin being more round, then you're going to be having more of the oxygen go towards this and less towards the abnormal sickle cell shaped ones, if they're still around. Okay, so in patients with sickle cell disease, increased levels of hemoglobin for the fetal type prevents the sickling of red blood cells. So something to consider for Casgevy and also for Lifgenia, they both have very similar adverse effects. Uh, so it's indicated for treatment of sickle cell disease in patients 12 years and older, okay? And it's also for if they have recurrent vaso-occlusive crises. So that's basically if the sickle cells occlude the blood flow, block the blood flow, and this just keep on happening over and over, so something has to be done. That's why you would want to be doing this if they're over 12 years and older. So now another thing to consider, after patient stem cells are collected, it may take up to six months to manufacture castrophy. The reasoning is the stem cells, they're extracted from the patient, 
They are then have to be sent to the manufacturing, the manufacturing plant. So wherever Kashjevi is being manufactured, it's not going to be in the hospitals or the primary care offices. It has to go to like the people who actually are making Kashjevi, and that could take about six months. Um, now, once it comes back, the patient is given chemo. So chemo is bad, it's kind of like a poison, and it's to eliminate the sickle coating stem cells, and this can result in immunosuppression. Immunosuppression basically means you can't fight off if any, like, virus or bacteria is on you. Normally, you could. Like, bacteria is all over your body normally. Strep, staph, you know, various other bacteria, they're normally there. They could either be helpful, they be nothing, you know, just there communal, they don't do any effect, but if you're immunosuppressed, they can be a lot worse. Strep can cause, you know, pharyngitis, pneumonia, and other stuff if you're immunosuppressed. So after catch heavy infusion, you will stay in the hospital to be monitored for recovery, and this can take, you know, six weeks, but times can vary, and, you know, your health care provider will determine this. So overall, what are we thinking here, you know, once you take the stem cells out, you got to wait six months to get the treatment. So you're going to have to deal with what the current managements are in pain and other, you know, flare-ups during those six months. Then once you get it, you're going to have to become immunosuppressed for a while. And you're going to have to stay in the hospital, which may cost lots and lots and lots of money, depending on how good your insurance is. So you're going to have to deal with that. And then once you're not really immunosuppressed anymore, or less or so, that you're stable, that you can leave, then, you know, it's a lot going into this. But for those people who are having constant attacks, this is a great option. So more adverse effects that are not as, you know, much. So we have pruitus, which is just, you know, general itching, GI pain, anorexia, which means like a less appetite, and stomatitis, which is like mouth sores. Anemia would be like less red blood cells or less iron, which can be expected because it will take time for the new stem cells to make new red blood cells. Um, and another thing is you give chemo before Kashjevi is administered to eliminate the sickle-causing stem cells. So I already said that before. And this this last part is more for Lifgenia than Kashjevi, but it's possible to also have blood cancer, you know, happen as a result of this. All right, so now we're moving away from Kashjevi and going towards the basics of Lifgenia. So similar to Kashjevi, Lifgenia requires removal of patient stem cells, uh, but the difference is we're not using CRISPR-Cas9 here. We're using something called a lentivirus, and this virus is going to go deliver code of normal hemoglobin to the patient's stem cells. So stem cells are removed. It's going to be, you know, a lentivirus. It's just a basic type of virus. It's going to be used to inject the new coating of normal hemoglobin into the cells. So the patient's stem cells, they are eliminated using chemo, the current ones, after this whole process is done. And again, they're gonna be immunosuppressed because of that. And then the Lifgenia modified stem cells are replaced in to the patient. So you're gonna have the same kind of symptoms that I had before for the considerations. You're gonna stay in the hospital a while because you're gonna be immunosuppressed from the chemo. And it's gonna take a while for them to be uh, manufactured. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be six months, but it's going to be a while too still uh, for the lentivirus to, you know, take its effect and m add a new normal hemoglobin in. So now we're going to more than the basics. So the lentiviral application, it's called a vector. So anything that is moving the genetic from one place to another place, they call that a vector. So a gene delivery vehicle for genetic modification. Now, the coding that the lentivirus add is specifically for beta hemoglobin. So there's alpha hemoglobin, there's beta hemoglobin, and then there's fetal hemoglobin, which are the three main type. So fetal is more of a consideration for uh, Kashjevi. So as I just said, the normal hemoglobin protein consists of a tetramer. Tetramer means four, four subunits, two alpha, and two beta hemoglobin units. So... So to really kind of like sum this up, Kashjevi is going to be increasing fetal hemoglobin and Lifgenia is going to be increasing normal beta hemoglobin. And by doing this, this is going to be increasing the normal round red blood cell types and less of the sickle shape. So this would be the hope to avoid more out, um, what do they call it, flare-ups 
of sickle cell disease. All right, guys, I know this is complicated. I try to make it basic. This is new stuff, so there's really not too much out there. I tried using like very reputable databases up to date. I went to the manufacturer's websites. I went to CDC, WHO. Yeah, so I will put all of my resources that I kind of used in the description, but I hope you enjoyed and found this to be informative. All right, guys, thank you. Jason, see you next time.